Hello Minecrafters, today I'm going to be talking about memory. Over here we have ROM and over here we have RAM. Two different types of memory and we're going to be talking about both and how we can make them nice and small. First we're going to be talking about ROM over here. It's a pretty compact version. Each memory cell takes only 2x2 two two, and it's controlled by a lever so it's easy to change. And right here we have this lever. You can see it turns on the uh, memory line. This lever. This lever and the last one. So right now I only have uh, one nibble of memory set up but it's expandable to any amount. And sorry for the lag, guys. My computer is not that good. It's a laptop. So you just have to bear with me until I get a better computer fully soon. So this is fully, uh, fully expandable. It's also easily addressable. So what that means is I can change this lever and the memory line is affected. But if I go over here and try to flip this bit or this bit, nothing happens because this is on the second memory line which is not active right now see right here oh. <laughs> see right here we have four repeaters each of these is the address bit and what this means is that this memory column right here is only active if the uh, input is on and right now it is but if we take that input off oops <laughs> put that back where did that go we take that off. We can oh, we can no longer set the memory line with this lever or any of them. And what this allows is you can just put a multiplexer right here, and you can have your input address, and it will automatically select the correct address, and you'll be able to select the um, the memory you want. Now here's how this works. Each one of these memory cells is set up like this. This bottom block is where the uh, address input comes in and this top lever uh, is the bit amount. So right now this lever is applying power so that torch is off. But if we take off the power that's equivalent to not powering the memory line this torch turns on and forces this block to turn off. No matter what we do, that block is always receiving power. So that torch will always stay off and it will never be able to power our red wool right here, our red memory line. But as soon as we apply power, this block is now no more receiving power from the bottom and so we're free to change it with our lever. And so as soon as we apply power, you can see all the torches turn off and we're able to uh, change the memory line once again. So that's a very compact ROM. It's 2x2, two two, expandable in both directions infinitely, assuming you have the, the uh, space and the correct multiplexer, which is, uh, there are some really good multiplexers made with pistons that have 2x2 two two outputs and they're modular so they can be expanded uh, infinitely. Uh, maybe I'll cover that in another video. Uh, but, yeah, so we have a very nice, very compact ROM that's also easily changeable with levers. So that's that. And over here is RAM. And what that means is that RAM can be changed with the circuitry. Right now I'm just having levers, but it would be exceedingly easy just to attach this to, I don't know, just some sort of a processor that would want to access and change memory. Now this uses pistons heavily. It's it's a this is one byte of RAM. We can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits. Now right now they are all reset. You see all the outputs are zero. Now if we go here and we change some levers, change some input, we can see that 
nothing has happened. And this is because RAM should only change when you give it a signal. And once you give it that signal, it will latch and it will stay at that value until you tell it to change again. So that's what this lever right here, this is the uh, lever to tell the RAM to update. And once I press this, the output will become the input. So we press this right here, and you can see those pistons all popped up, all in the correct order. And as soon as we lower this, the pistons are now latched, and the pistons will stay up no matter what. They will not, uh, the pistons that are up will not move down, and the pistons that are down will not move up. We can go, we can change the input however we want, we can like invert everything. But the output will still remain what was given to it before. And that's the beauty of RAM. The output only changes, or the, uh, the state only changes when you tell it to. Like if I flick this lever again, all the pistons have now become the new input. And as far as I know, this is one of the smallest RAM modules uh, I've seen implemented yet. It might be a bit tricky to wire because the wires are so close together, but if that becomes a problem, it's uh, really simple to space it out. Uh, instead of being one block apart, you could make each module two blocks apart, which would uh, help with wiring long memory buses. But anyway, this is how it works. So this works off the fact that... Here, let me quickly turn on this memory so we can get a better look. So this works upon the fact that when a piston is pushing up a block that is powered, it will stay up. Now you can see this piston on the edge here is pushing up a green block that is in turn being powered by a repeater on the right. This repeater right here is keeping the block up, and it's keeping the piston up. But if this piston is down, this repeater will not bring the piston up. It'll only keep it up if it's already up. So what that means is that if we turn off these top repeaters, there is nothing that is keeping these blocks up. The only reason they're up is because of the input down here. This input comes through the red, uh, the red wool into these repeaters and is directly powering the pistons. If I change this right here, we can see that memory has gone down. It's reset. And if we flip it back, it's back up again. But as soon as we flick this switch, all of these repeaters come on, which means all of these are kept up. And at the same time, these pistons are um, they're expanded, which uh, no longer lets the uh, input access the pistons. You can see all the repeaters are off. And what that means is that the pistons are not being powered, so they cannot be changed because all of these repeaters are off. The only, repeat, uh, the only pistons that are being powered are the ones that are already on, so that they will stay that way you know, as long as your circuit desires. And when you need to change your memory, you just change the input. And as soon as you um, flick your switch, the red wool comes up, letting the input through. It powers the pistons, which raise the appropriate bits. And as soon as you latch it, these repeaters come on, which keep the appropriate bits set and output them into your computer or whatever you're using this RAM for. So that about wraps up my video. Two memory, uh, two memory methods, ROM, which is exceedingly compact and easily modifiable, mod modifiable, and RAM, which is also very compact and easy to use. All right, so thanks for watching my video, and I hope that this has been a help in all your computing and Minecraft needs. Thanks, guys. See you later.